to open your Bibles to Colossians chapter 2. Now, I've been preaching for 32 years. <clears throat> 32 years, amen. That don't seem like long, but some people act like it's a long time, but I guess it's because I've been preaching longer than some of them have been alive. But in 32 years, I've never done this before, but I'm going to do it tonight. I'm going to, I'm going to finish preaching this morning. Friend is preaching tonight what I started this morning. And uh, I read this verse of Scripture this morning, and you know, the Lord put it on my heart a couple of days ago, and I started feeling something. I know it ain't always about feeling, but every once in a while, every once in a while, the Lord will just, He'll just touch you and let you know something's going to happen. And uh, boy, we saw some people this morning get some help. We saw some people get uh, uh, some business done with God. And, and that's what we're all about. That's what our church is about. Our church is about seeing people get saved. Our church is about seeing people, young men and women and boys and girls and older people, getting, uh, getting up here on this altar and get some help. Uh, i tell you what Brother Sam told me as we left this morning. He had kind of had tears in his eyes. He's a preacher. There's still, still wet tear spots on that altar. I said, glory to God, brother. Amen. I can't think of anything better. I'd rather have tear stains on our altar up here than to have brand new thousand dollar chandeliers in this place. I'd rather know that God showed up here and met with us than anything I know. Amen? In Colossians chapter 2, I'm going to jump on down to verse 14 and I'm going to try to finish preaching. I'm going to start preaching where I was at this morning. He said in verse 14, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us and took it out of the way, nailing it to His cross. I want you to know that this tonight that I want to recap just a minute where I was at this morning. Uh, I, first of all, we said you can nail your failures to the cross. Amen. Everybody's got them. They do you stopping because you have failure. Just because you stumped your toe and fell down and made a mistake, pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and take off and go at it again. Amen. And just nail it to the cross, brother. Let Jesus bear your burden. Amen. We said, secondly, that uh, you can nail your fears to the cross. Everybody's got fears. Everybody's afraid of something. Uh, you might act like you're not, but you are. There's something you're afraid of. i tell you what, sometimes I think, brother, I ain't afraid of nothing. And then Mama gives me that look, you know, that look, and it just sends a chill down my spine. Like, no, that's worse than Jason and Freddie uh, going into a fight together. I mean, it's awful. But, brother, I, listen, you can nail it to the cross. And, you know, thirdly, I said this. I said you can nail your faith to the cross, not literally, but spiritually speaking. Brother, I'll tell you, if you'll raise your family in the shadow of that old rugged cross, brother, I'll tell you, you'll look back over your life. I remember when my mama died, she said, Ronnie, she said, I tried to serve God and be a good mama and a good wife. And she said, I think I've done pretty good. I said, Mama, I think you've done pretty good too. I'll tell you, brother, I'm glad tonight that you can nail it to the cross. And fourthly, I said this, you can nail your faith to the cross. When your faith is weak and you just don't have faith, uh, you don't even have faith to get a prayer through. If you just trust and just trust it, you don't have to feel it. You don't have to go by past experiences. Just believe what that blessed book says. Oh, brother, sometimes that's all we got. Sometimes that's that's all we have is the written Word, which is the Word of God. Oh, brother, if you'll just nail your faith to the cross. Oh, brother, I was right along in here this morning when the wheels came off. And, brother, God showed up in this place. And people started running the aisles and come to this altar. I don't know how many years it's been since I've been up preaching right in the middle of a message. And people start coming to the altar, crying and begging God to help them and do something in their life. Oh, but, brother, I want you to know. The greatest message we can put out at Grace Baptist Church is look yonder to the cross. Go to the cross. Amen. Find yourself at the foot of the cross and God will help you. And God will bless you. Amen. You can nail your flesh to the cross. But you better learn to do that. You better learn to do that, young people. Let me give you young people a little hint right here. Let me give you a little suggestion. You say, preacher, I can handle it. I, I'm real spiritual. I read my Bible every day. And, and me and my little boyfriend is not going to go too far. Let me challenge you to do this. Fast for one day and one night. 
fast for 24 hours. I mean, go without eating for about, I mean, start tonight, don't eat another bite till about Tuesday morning. And if you handle that, bless God Almighty, you might come walk up and tell me that and make me halfway believe it. Listen, but if you can't tell your stomach no to a happy meal, bless God, you ain't going to tell other parts no when it wants what it wants. You hear me tonight? You better hear me and hear me well. This old bald-headed preacher is up here trying to help you and tell you something that will spare your life from misery and shame and guilt that you'll take to your grave. I'm telling you better, Lord, to nail that flesh to the cross. The Bible says, mortify those members. That mortify means to kill them. I'm not talking about physically. Of course I'm not. I'm talking about mentally and spiritually. You better kill out that thing in your life causing you trouble. Amen. He said, mortify those members. In other words, you're going to have a fight with the flesh. You're going to have a fight with yourself. Listen, the sooner you understand that the greatest enemy you have in this world is the one you're carrying around with you. I carry a picture of my greatest enemy in my wallet. And they've got a number under it and got his mug under there. And it looks like a mug shot in the police station. I'm talking about myself. Amen. Brother, you better learn to nail it to the cross. How do you do that, preacher? You find yourself in an old-fashioned altar. You read that blessed Bible. I mean, brother, you take in more of the spiritual things than you do the carnal things. If you don't do anything but take in the flesh and the world and carnality, then that's all that's ever going to come out. Brother, if you let the flesh have its way, it's going to do what it wants. It's going to go where it wants. It's going to be with who it wants to be with. It'll have its way. And brother, years from now, you'll look back and you'll say, my God, I can't believe that I'm where I am. I had no idea that it was going to take me down this road. Amen. Could I tell you this tonight? That old flesh has ruined bigger men than you. Amen. That old flesh has ruined mightier women than you, young ladies. Amen. But I tell you, there's people in the Bible, great men of God, greater than me. There's people in the Bible greater than Brother Jeff or Brother Sam or Brother Joe or any of the rest of us. Brother, when I look at man, men like David, that was a mighty man of war. And he was a great man of God. And the Bible said he was a man after God's own heart. Brother, that flesh took him down. Brother, if he could have seen it coming and if he had nailed it to the cross. Listen, brother, you say, preacher, there's a temptation. That's getting the best of me. You better get it to the cross. And you better nail it. You better nail it to the cross. You better get up here on this altar and pray and seek God and say, God, it's bigger than I am. I can't have it. I've been saved over 30 years. I've been saved 32 years or something like that. I've about lost count. And I'll tell you what, the flesh is just as crazy right now as it was when I was 20 years old. I don't know why you think this. I guess just, that's just the devil's way of fooling you. But, but you think the older you get, it'll be a little bit easier to serve God. It'll be a little bit easier. The temptations won't be as bad because it won't be a young strapping lad. But you know what? It's just as bad. And sometimes it's worse. Amen? Sometimes it's worse than when you're young. Oh, brother, listen, the devil will fool you and seduce you. And it'll make you think everything's going to be all right. And it'll make you think you can handle it. But the Bible said the way of man is right in his own eyes. But God pondereth the heart. God knows your heart tonight. And, brother, listen, this is for somebody. You better get up to this altar. And you better cry and pray. Brother, there's so many people out of this morning that is having to line up down the aisle. I'll tell you, brother, if you can't get up here on this altar, you find you a place. And you talk to a loving Savior, and you nail that thing to the cross. Didn't James say this? When a man's drawn away, he's tempted and drawn away and enticed, and he's drawn away by what? His own lust. Your lust don't give me a bit of trouble. Some people have a lust for money. Some people have a lust for sex. Some people have a lust for drugs. I mean, it's, how, it's a multitude of things that it could be. Amen? And what people do is they look, they have their own problem, and they look at yours and they say, well, he, he's, a, he's a hypocrite. He shouldn't do that when really deep down inside they've got their own giant they're fighting with. they got their own problem that they're dealing with. But, brother, I want to tell you the devil knows what your weak spot is. Everybody's got one. You say, I don't have one, preacher. Oh, yeah. Dust that halo off and look in the mirror and face reality, bud. You really got one. You've got a problem. Hey, baby, that's your biggest problem is that stinking pride. That's the greatest sin of all. What a a man assumes that he's all right and thinks he can't see it and thinks he don't need God and he thinks he don't need an old-fashioned altar. Oh, I want to tell you tonight, Brother Jesus Christ said that man that smote his breath and said, God have mercy on me, a sinner, that that man went down to his house more justified.
crucified. You better get it on the cross, brother. You better get a handle on it. Because if you don't, it'll get a handle on you. If you don't control it, it'll control you. Get your flesh and nail it to the cross. Amen? Nail it to the cross. Number six, I want to say this. You can nail your frame to the cross. Think about this in Psalm 103. He said, Like a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame. He remembereth that we are dust. What does that mean, preacher? Nail your frame to the cross. I mean, everything that you are and everything that you hope to be, all your dreams and aspirations, just nail them to the cross. Listen, brother, it don't matter if you live this life and you become famous and rich and you have everything that everybody wishes they had and have lots and lots and lots of money and you're famous across this planet. And brother, if you die lost without God, it ain't worth a plug nickel. Jesus said, what would a man give in exchange for his soul? What would a man give if he gained the whole world and lost his own soul? What I'm talking about, your frame, I'm talking about that frame is what you're built around. I'm not talking about your physical body we're looking at. I'm talking about who you are. You better nail yourself to the cross. Listen, young people, the best thing you can do, some of you already already on that path, is to give yourself to the Lord. Give yourself to the Lord. Don't worry about your boyfriend. Don't worry about your girlfriend. Don't worry so much about your career and going to college. There ain't nothing wrong with none of those things. But I'm saying you better nail your frame to the cross. You better lay your foot at the feet, yourself at the foot of feet of Jesus and say, God, I want to be yours. Whatever I do, wherever I go, and wherever you take me, God, I'm yours. Oh, brother, I want to tell you something. I remember when I first got saved. I mean, brother, I got saved. I got me a dose, brother. I know that I know that I know that I got saved. Oh, but I want to tell you something. There's a few things in my life that I didn't give up, that I still had. I know I saved. I knew I was. I didn't know much about the Bible, but I knew I saved. But I still had a few things in my life that wasn't right. I remember one Sunday night, it wasn't two or three months after I got saved. Brother, I mean, I totally surrendered to God. I went to the old-fashioned altar there, and I prayed, and I cried. I mean, I just no redneck. I didn't know a whole lot. My daddy's a preacher. That didn't mean I knew nothing about God. I got up and I cried, and I boohooed. I poured my heart out. I said, God, I'll give everything to you. I'll quit doing this. I'll quit doing that. Lord, I'll quit. I'll just start doing this and start doing that. I said, God, I'm yours. I'll do whatever you tell me. Whatever you want me to do, I'll go where you want me to go. Oh, brother, I tell you, it did something to me. It changed my life. Oh, brother, I had that one little thing or those two or three little things I didn't think there's anything wrong with. But God said, I want all of you. I want all of you. He said, I want all of you. And Paul said, I beseech you that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Oh, brother, I want to tell you what. You better present your body and nail yourself to that cross if you want to live any kind of life that's got any kind of peace. I've had a lot of ups and downs and a lot of valleys. I've been through the ringer two or three times, but I don't regret, regret nary bit of it. I've never looked back and said, I wish I'd stayed a drunk. I remember that night, Brother Sam, that I just nailed it to the cross. I said, Lord, I can't, I can't handle all this. Hey. I might have told you this, but I used to listen to heavy metal, you know, rock music back in the old days. You kids don't know what that is. You think that's a man in a tin, tin man outfit playing rock music. But, but I had to nail that to the cross. I was riding down the road one night and pitched it out the window. And a fellow in my church, he said, come by and see me. i got something for you. I went by his house and he gave me a tape. Y'all don't know what that is either. Cassette tape. It was right after eight tracks phased out. And he, I popped that thing in, didn't know what it was, and it was the Happy Goodman family. And they were singing, What a name! What a lovely name, the name of Jesus. There's a name above all others. Oh, wonderful to hear. Oh, brother, there's something down in my heart started turning. It felt like there's something down in my soul cutting cartwheels. And I said, that's what I want. That's what I love. That's my crowd now. Oh, brother, God, come in that car with me. He said, son, that ain't your crowd no more. That pot smoking, beer drinking, cussing, hell raising, but that ain't for you no more. Oh, I said, thank you, Lord. And boy, me and God went down the road and listened to the happy goodness. And I shouted. Out, out, brother. You know why that is? I ain't, there ain't nothing good about me. That ain't the point, brother. Being good or bad ain't the issue. I said, I nailed it to the cross. I said, God, I give myself to you. Amen. I've had to remind myself several times over the years when people looked at me and thought I was crazy for some of the things God's done in our lives and 
places he's took us, family and loved ones look at you like, well, you're crazy. You could have a good job and make good money here. If you've got a home and your kids in a good school, why would you, why would you move off and go do that? Why would you move to another part of the world and preach to people you don't even know? And I think back to that night where I nailed it to the cross and where I promised God. I said, God, if you'll just help me. Lord, God, help me. I'm going to nail it to the cross. I'm going to give it all to you. Lord, wherever you take me, whatever happens. Listen, brother, I love this church. I love being where I'm at. But if the church ran me off next week, you know what I'd do? I'd say, Lord, I'm in your hands. You took me here and this is what's happened. Now, God, you take us on down the road. And God, you've never let us miss a meal. And God, you paid our bills, and God, it's up to you now. God, I've trusted you this far. I'm going to keep trusting you from here on out. And brother, if you'll nail that thing to the cross, you don't have to trust in yourself. You don't have to trust in your job. You don't have to trust in the government. Thank God, just nail it to the cross and let Jesus marry it. The best thing you young people can do is tell your boyfriend, look him right in eyes. If you got one, if you ain't, you're blessed. Miss Shirley said, Amen. And our worst after you marry Matthew Miss Shirley. Little boys turn into big boys. They don't turn into men, they just turn into bigger boys. Best thing you know, look him right eyes and say, Look, I like you, and you're all right and all that stuff, but my number one I mean the one's really got my heart is Jesus. Oh, he's got me a hundred percent. And if Jesus don't approve of you, mean you're breaking up. Amen. Best thing you boys can tell them girls is I love the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you've got a problem with being me and a fanatic, that's what that old West Virginia preacher called it. He said, if you got a problem with that, I'll, I'll just break up and gracefully bow out and take her down the road and set her out somewhere and call her mom and daddy come pick her up. <laughs> Y'all understand what I'm saying, don't you? Amen. He wants all of you is what I'm saying. Nail it to the cross. No man would marry a woman. No sane man. I saw a thing on TV one time about these women that were prostitutes. Now check this out, how stupid people are. You heard me right, stupid. These women walk the streets of prostitutes eight or ten hours a day and come home to the husband. He's fixing macaroni and cheese and getting helping kids with homework. What an idiot, man. I mean, brother, when you marry somebody, you want all of them. You want their mind, soul, body, their heart. You want them 100%. They're yours. You know why, you know why Miss Debbie has me? Because she got my heart a long time ago. And the rest of me comes with it. Brother, I ain't going to mess that up. I ain't going to jeopardize it. I told her one time, I said, Darling, if you run off and leave me packed two suitcases, I'm coming too. I'm going where you go. Amen? And brother, listen, you know what that is? That's two people together that become one flesh. And we're going the same place, the same way, in the same direction together. We're one flesh. And where she goes, I want to go, and where I go, she's going. Well, she wants to or not. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Nail it to the cross of your frame, your everything that you are. And he said, Well, preacher, I want to be an airplane pilot. There's nothing wrong with being an airplane pilot. I'm not, I'm not knocking that. I'm not saying it. But nail it to the cross first. And if the Lord says, I want you to be an airplane pilot, fly away, brother. But don't, don't go off in search of dreams. That may not be His perfect will. Don't spend your life in the permissive will of God when you could spend your life in the perfect will of God. Amen? A lot of people spend their life going in circles like the children of Israel come out of Egypt, but they never went over into Canaan land and experienced a Spirit-filled life. I believe that's what our church is experiencing, some of the that kind of glory coming down. I mean, it, what happens around here is unusual for a Baptist church. It really is. And it's not made up. It's not some emotional. It's not a mind game. We get here. We got here this morning. I had no idea all that was going to happen. I'm glad it did. Now, don't don't. Hey, listen. Get it right. I love it. That's why I cut the message short and give the invitation. God's moving, and people's coming down the aisle and getting right with God. I didn't want to get away the big preacher. He might hurt me. He might lay me on the bed sick next week where I can't preach at all. So I'm going to get out of the way. But I'm saying nail it to the cross. And I'm going to say this last of all. last thing I want to say, your failure, your fear, your family, your faith, your flesh, your frame. But the most important thing, nail your future to the cross. Get that thing nailed down, brother. If you're here tonight and you don't know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you're saved, I don't know a whole lot, I ain't. You know, you don't, have to be a, you don't have to be a Ph.D. in this life. 
You know, they interview people on TV and they make it sound like if you hadn't been to Harvard or Princeton or something, you, you're just an idiot. But that's not true. The greatest thing anybody can have in this life, aside from Jesus, is just common sense. Amen. People don't have that anymore. Just common sense. Think about it. People will protect their dog to keep it from crossbreeding with another dog that's not a purebred and let their daughter jump in the car with a guy that looks like he needs to be dipped and flipped. Ain't that right? Don't even know the boy. Send her off down the road in the dark in a car and trust her. You're crazy, man. You say, don't you trust your kids? No, I don't. I don't trust them. Look, look up here at me. I don't trust me. Are you crazy? The Bible said put no confidence in the flesh. This flesh still knows how to sin. And when you put trust in it and act like, oh, well, he wouldn't do that. I raised him better. You're in for trouble, brother. Amen. Amen. So, preach, you just preach too hard. Ain't you glad? Ain't you glad? Ain't you glad to have real preaching? Hey, brother, I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to tell you. Nail your future to the cross. You say, preach, I don't know what's going to happen to me when I die. You'll be dead for one thing. And for another thing, you're going on a trip. Come on, get us a song. You're going somewhere. Get that future. In 1978, like that song we sung tonight. Was it tonight or this morning? The old account. Tonight. See, I don't even know what day it is. I got something settled, Brother Jeff. Some of y'all are smarter than me about certain things. But it ain't about how smart you are. But here's what I was going to tell you. I know there's one thing I know. I know that if I don't make it out that back door, Brother Chuck, I know where I'm going. Amen. Well, preacher, nobody can know that. Yeah, you can. Amen. You nail it down. You see, Jesus was nailed to the cross for you so that you could be saved and so you could have joy and peace. He didn't die on the cross because He did anything wrong. He did because you, He did die because you did wrong. He didn't die because He's a drunkard or a fornicator. He died because we were. And God saw in His wisdom, as Brother Joe's been teaching, God looked down through the eons of time and saw millions and millions and millions of men and women, boys and girls, dying lost without hope, leaping out into the dark and going to hell and burning throughout eternity. So Jesus took that cross up. And when He laid down there on that cross, and they took those sharp spikes, and those Roman soldiers, they treated Him bad, y'all. They treated Him bad. That movie probably didn't even do justice to what they really did to him. Stripped him down naked in front of the whole crowd. Made fun of him. Spit on him. Have you ever thought about some of the people he had healed? Was probably right in that same crowd. People heard him preach. And they throwed him down there like a common thug. And child molesters can roam the streets free. Think about that. The only man that never did sin, he laid down... And when they put them spikes in his hands, tens of thousands of angels was watching with their swords drawn. They was ready. Say the word. We'll stop this. But I believe when they put them nails in his hands, he looked down through time and he saw, saw Brother He, saw Brother Miss Kelly, saw Brother Sam, saw Miss Kelly, saw Chuck, he saw Daniel, saw Travis, saw Brother Jason, saw Brother Ronnie. He said, This is why I'm going to die. When He was on the cross, you was on His mind. But even further back than that, the Bible said before the foundation of the world, when Eve reached up and took that fruit, put it in her mouth, God made plans. He had already made plans before that to send Jesus to the cross. God's judgment. That's what that handwriting of ordinances is talking about. The Bible said, The soul that sinneth it shall die in the Old Testament. And we're born in sin. We're born that way. Born with sin in our blood. Amen. So you're dying spiritually. And when you leave this world, you're dying forever. So the best thing to do is just nail it to the cross. Amen. Whatever it is, there might be... I know a bunch of people came to the altar this morning. The whole church came just about the exception of one or two. But you might want to come tonight and get something nailed down. I've got things I'm worried about. Not really worried, but concerned about i got a couple brothers that I'm not sure about. I got a chance to see one a couple of weeks ago. and Just different things. Things about the church that bothers me and concerns me. But you know what you have to do? You just have to nail it. You can't leave it loose. You've got to nail it. Say, Lord, I can't handle this. You're just going to have to take it. You're just going to have to. 
Ain't it amazing that, that you go in circles before you finally realize that's the Christian life? What I'm trying to do is help you to understand what it took me years to figure out when I should have just knew it. But I've carried stuff around and carried it around and carried it around and then went to God as a last resort when I should have went to Him as a first resort. Lord, I can't handle this one. This is just too much for me. God will do what you can't do. When you're at the end of your ropes and you can't even tie a knot and hang on, just come to the cross. Say, Lord, I don't know what to do about this. Me and my wife ain't getting along. Me and my husband ain't getting along. I've got a lost husband. I've got a lost wife. I've got children that's astray. Lord, I don't know what to do. It's driving me crazy. But you know what he'll do? He'll reach down and take that burden. And it might not be fixed by the time you walk to the back door, but he'll bear that burden. Yes, he will. And he'll work on it. He may fix it immediately. He may fix it in time. But either way, God will, with the temptation, make a way of escape, the Bible said. You don't have to be in misery and unhappy. Here's what I think is going to happen. When we get to the judgment seat of Christ, we're going to look back and we're going to say, you mean to tell me that I carried all that mess around and didn't have to? The Lord's going to say, yep. I shed my blood for peace and joy and contentment, happiness. But you chose to carry all that mess around. There ain't no point in carrying all that. The Bible said lay aside the sin and the weight that does so easily beset us. If you're weighted down with something, chunk it. Try him and see. See if he'll do what he said. What was that song they sang a while ago? said, His word's true. Everything he said he did, everything he said he would do, he will. Do we really believe that tonight? Do you really believe it? Let's all stand.